up with uh, chapter 16. And we probably won't be here the full hour and 20, 25 minutes. Um, page, uh, sorry, chapter 17. We left off on Tuesday with Lupin showing up in in the Shrieking Shack, shack and Lupin disarms <clears throat> Harry and Hermione by taking their wands using the Expelliarmus charm and catches their wands. Black is still lying on the floor. Crookshanks is on Black's chest. And we're told Harry stood there feeling suddenly empty. He hadn't done it. His nerve had failed him. Black was going to be handed back to the Dementors. And then Lupin says, where is he, Sirius? Harry doesn't understand what Lupin meant. Black's face was quite expressionless. For a few seconds, he didn't move at all. Then very slowly, he raised his empty hand, points at Ron. Harry looks at Ron, doesn't understand what's going on. Lupin says, but then why hasn't he shown himself before now? Unless, unless he was the one you switched. Black nods. Harry, what? He doesn't finish the question because Lupin lowers his wand looks at Black, goes over to him, and pulls him up off the floor like a brother and embraces him. Hermione, I don't believe it. And Hermione blurts out that Lupin's a werewolf. Page 344. You! You and him! I didn't tell anyone. I've been covering for you. I trusted you. He's a werewolf. Not at all up to your usual standard, Hermione. Only one out of three, I'm afraid. I have not been helping Sirius get into the castle. I certainly don't want Harry dead, but I am a werewolf. Ron tries to get up. Says, get away from me, werewolf. Lupin, how long have you known? Since Snape assigned the essay. Well, that's why he assigned the essay, Lupin says. Okay. You're the cleverest witch of your age I've ever met, Hermione. Which is kind of interesting when you think about it, because who does that obviously include? <laughs> Harry's mom, yeah. who was pretty sharp at Hermione's age also. Hermione, I'm not. I'd have told everyone if I'd been a bit cleverer. Lupin, they already know. The staff all knows. She's like, what? Ron, Dumbledore hired you when he knew you were a werewolf? Is he mad? Lupin, some of the staff thought so. He had to work very hard to convince certain teachers that I'm trustworthy. Harry, and he was wrong. Notice, Harry thinks he's wrong because he thinks he's been helping Sirius. So Lupin has to explain. He takes Harry and Ron's wands, uh, Harry and Hermione's and Ron's wands, and gives them back to them. What is this a sign of? Okay, he's not there to hurt them. I mean, it's also trust. Yeah, it's trust. I mean, okay, we understand within the context of novel their wands. Let's put it in a real world situation. He hands them back their clocks. Makes it a little bit more real. What could any one of them do? Okay. There, says Lupin, you're armed, we're not. Now will you listen? Harry doesn't know what to think. If you haven't been helping him, how did you know he's here? The map. The Marauder's map. I was in my office examining it. Harry, you know how to work it? Well, of course I do. I'm Mooney. You... The important thing is, I was watching it carefully this evening because I had an idea you, Ron, and Hermione might try and sneak out of the castle to visit Hagrid before his hippogriff was executed. In other words, I was keeping an eye on you for your protection. And I was right, wasn't I? 
You might have been wearing your father's old cloak, Harry. How do you know about that? Number of times I saw James disappearing under it. Point is, even if you're wearing an invisibility cloak, you still show up on the Marauder's map. Little problem, because the invisibility cloak is supposed to protect you against all charms and such. So how can it work? The Marauder's map. I think it has to do something, at least, with because James helped create the Marauder's map. And he knew the power of the invisibility cloak, so he kind of worked a back way around that, let's say. Okay. I watched you cross the ground to enter Hagrid's hut. Twenty minutes later, you left Hagrid, set off toward the back castle, but now there is somebody else with you. What? Lupin, I couldn't blame my eyes. No one was with us. And then I saw another dot labeled Sirius Black. I saw him collide with you as he pulled two of you into the Whomping Willow. Ron, one of us. No, two of you. Can I have a look at your rat? What Scabbers got to do with it? Everything, can I see him please? Ron pulls out Scabbers. And Siri says that's not a rat. He's an animagus by the name of Peter Pettigrew. Ron, Harry, you're mental. You're crazy. Peter Pettigrew's dead, says Harry. He, pointing at Sirius, has killed him 12 years ago. I meant to. Little Peter got the better of me. Okay. Black lunges at Scabbers. Falls on Ron's broken leg. No, Lupin. Uh, no, Sirius, says Lupin. You can't do it like that. They need to understand. They've got a right to know. So Black says, okay, tell him whatever you like. Just get it over with. I want to commit the murder I was in prison for. Ron, you're nutters. There were witnesses who saw Pettigrew die. Ron yells. Excuse me, Harry says. A whole street full of them. They didn't see what they thought they saw, says Black. Everyone thought Sirius killed Peter, says Lincoln. I believed it myself until I saw the map tonight, because the Marauder's map never lies. Peter's alive. Ron's holding him. Notice what Lupin didn't do when he went to find Harry, Ron, and Hermione, and Peter Pettigrew. He doesn't bring the map with him. Because if he had brought the map with him, all he would have to do is open it up. Though, of course, they are in Hogsmeade now, and the map doesn't extend all the way into Hogsmeade. Okay? But if they had the map and they were to make their way back into the tunnel a little bit, suddenly they would all appear and there would be Peter Pettigrew's name. So, Hermione says it can't be true. Lupin, why not? Because people would know Peter Pettigrew had been an animagus. We did animagi in class with Professor McGonagall. I looked them up when I did my homework. The Ministry of Magic keeps tabs on witches and wizards. You can become animals. There's a register and everything. What is Hermione basing her reason or logic on? Okay, so books. That they register. That they self-register. Okay. Here's, here's a real-world example since this is all in the news today and everything. Say the federal government, say President Obama, because it would never happen with Congress, but say President Obama, after his visit to Oregon tomorrow, where he's going to go visit the town where the shooting occurred, passed an executive order that said, Every weapon in the United States must be registered with the federal government. If you own a weapon or if you own a hundred weapons, you have got to go register every last one of them with the federal government. Would everybody do that? Hell no. Would some? Yes. Some would do it. They would say, 
the government tells me I need to do this, I'm not going to be a lawbreaker. I'm going to do what the government tells me to do. Okay? Harry barely had time to marvel inwardly at the effort Hermione put into her homework. And Lupin starts to laugh. Right again, Hermione. But the ministry never knew. There used to be three unregistered animagi running around Hogwarts. In other words, we never told them. Remus, uh, Black says, come on, Remus. All right, but you've got to help me, Sirius. Lupin breaks off. There's a noise behind them. Run, this place is haunted. No, it's not, says Lupin. Shrieky Shack was never haunted. The screams and howls villagers used to hear were made by me. He says, that's where all of this starts, with my becoming a werewolf. Okay. He says, I was a very small boy, and he tells him his history. He says, the potion Snape's been making for me is a very recent re discovery. Before the Wolfsbane potion was discovered, I became a fully-fledged monster once a month. It seemed impossible I would be able to come to Hogwarts. But Dumbledore became headmaster, and he was sympathetic. He said, as long as we took certain precautions, there was no reason I shouldn't come to school. Right? He says, I told you guys months ago, Whomping Willow was planted the year I came to Hogwarts. Excuse me, the truth is it was planted because I came to Hogwarts. It was planted to cover the entrance to the tunnel that I would use to go to the Shrieking Shack where I would transform. Okay? Once a month. He says mm, the transformations were terrible. It's very painful to turn into a werewolf. Okay? So the villagers heard the shrieks, the howls. They assumed the place was haunted. But, he says, apart from my transpirations, I was happier than I'd ever been in my life. Why? Because the first time ever I had friends. Three great friends. Sirius Black, Peter Pettigrew, and of course your father. My friends could hardly fail to notice that I disappeared once a month. So, what? They worked out what happened. They realized I was a werewolf, and they didn't desert me. They became animagi. Harry, my dad too, notice what has happened to Harry. He's into the story. Okay. Yes, indeed. Took them the best part of three years. So, when they arrive at Hogwarts all the same year, Lupin is a werewolf. Takes him, he says, the best part of three years. So by the end of their third year, in other words, the age Harry, Ron, Hermione are now. They worked out how to do it. Your father and Sirius here were the cleverest students in the school. And lucky they were because the transformation can go horribly wrong. They could turn each turn into a different animal at will. Finally, notice, in our fifth year, they managed it. Okay? So, took them the best part of three years. They learned how to do it by the end of their third year. They are able to do it in their fifth year. Hermione, but how did that help you? Well, they couldn't keep me company as humans, but they could as animals. Werewolves only endangered people. A werewolf isn't going to harm another animal. So they transformed. Peter, as the smallest, could slip beneath the willow's attacking branches, touch the knot that freezes it. They then slip down the tunnel and join me. Okay? Get to the point, Remus. So, he says, Sirius and James transformed into such large animals they were able to keep a werewolf in check. Harry, what kind of animal was my father? But Hermione cuts him off. That was still really dangerous, says Hermione. Running around in the dark with a werewolf? Lupin. Yeah, it still haunts me, that thought. And there were near misses, many of them. We laughed about them afterwards. We were young, thoughtless, carried away with our own cleverness. In other words, Lupin says now, at the age he is here, which is mid-30s, probably about 34, 35. I think 
think James and, and Lily were supposed to be 20 or 21 when Harry was born, and it's now 13 years later, so 34, 35, something like that. Lupin says, I'm still bothered by how we behaved then. Why? Because they put other people in danger. Okay? We're going to see more of this as the books progress. Um, he says, I feel guilty about betraying Dumbledore's trust too. All right. So he says, all this year I've been battling with myself, wondering whether I should tell Dumbledore that Sirius was an animagus. But I didn't. Why? Because I was too cowardly. It would have meant admitting I'd betrayed his trust while I was at school, admitting I'd led others along with me, and Dumbledore's trust has meant everything. He let me into Hogwarts as a boy. He gave me a job as an adult, etc. Right? Snape's been right about me all along. Snape? What's Snape? He's here, Sirius. He's teaching here. And he looks at Harry, Ron, and Hermione and says, Snape was at school with us. Fought very hard against my appointment to the Defense Against the Dark Arts job. He's been telling Dumbledore all year I'm not to be trusted. He has his reasons. Okay? Serious made him. Served him right. Okay? Harry, so that's why Snape doesn't like you. He thought you were in on the joke, Snape says. That's right, as he shows up behind them. Okay? pulling off Harry's invisibility cloak and pointing, pointing his wand directly at Lupin. So, Snape's heard all this. What should he do? Does he know Sirius hasn't been trying to get Harry? Yes. Has he heard the stuff about Peter? Some. So, Harry and Hermione try to intervene with Snape, try to get him to let Lupin and Black finish their story. He tells them to be quiet, that they don't understand. Harry goes and blocks the doorway. Page 360. Snape says, get out of the way, Potter. If I hadn't been here to save your skin, Lupin could have killed me about a hundred times this year. Why didn't you finish me off earlier? Don't ask me to fathom the way a werewolf's mind thinks. Notice what Snape thinks. He's a werewolf. It's all he is. Right? Harry, you're pathetic. They made a fool of you at school. You won't even listen. Okay? So Harry, Ron, Hermione used the Expelliarmus charm on Snape. Take his wand from him. Lupin ties him up. Okay. And Harry says 362 to Lupin. I'm still not saying I believe you. Well, he hasn't finished the story yet. So Ron clutches, scabbers tighter as Lupin says, You boy, give me Peter, please. Ron, come off it. You trying to say he broke out of Azkaban just to get his hands on scabbers? I mean, okay, say Pettigrew could turn into a rat. There are millions of rats. How is he supposed to know which one he's after if he's locked up in Azkaban? And Lupin turns to Black and says, you know, that's a good question. How do you answer that? And Sirius pulls out a piece of paper that he's had folded in his robes. And it's the photograph from the Daily Prophet that Ron actually sent to Harry at the beginning of the school year showing Ron's family in front of the pyramids in Egypt. And it's Ron and his brothers and sister and his parents and scabbers hanging out of Ron's front pocket with his two paws over the edge. How did you get this, fudge, last time he came to Azkaban? And there was Peter on the front page on this boy's shoulder. I knew him at once. How many times did I see him transform? His front paw, Lupin realizes. Ron, what about it? He's got a toe missing. Of course he does. Just before he transformed, when I cornered him, he yelled for the whole street to hear that I betrayed Lily and James. 
Then before I could curse him, he blew apart the street with the wand behind his back, killed everyone within 20 feet of himself, sped down the sewer. Didn't you ever hear, Ron? Biggest beat of Peter they found was a finger. Ron, look, Scabbers probably had a fight. He's been in my family for ages. Twelve years, in fact, says Lupin. Didn't you ever wonder why he's living so long? How long do rats normally live? Three or four years. Not looking so good right now, is he? Well, it's because of the cat. And Siri says, cat's not mad. It's the most intelligent of his kind I've ever met. He's not just a cat, by the way. Turns out, fantastic beasts are where to find them. He's some other kind of creature. Okay? So, Siri says, the cat brought me word of Peter. Um... Bottom of 364. Lupin says, yes, I have come to finish him, Peter, off. Harry says, Lupin, don't you see all this time we thought Sirius betrayed your parents. Peter tracked him down, but it was the other way around. Sirius tracked Peter down. Harry, he was their secret keeper. He said so. And what does Siri say? We switched. The week before they died. He says, the night they died, I had arranged to check on Peter, make sure he was still safe. And when I arrived at his hiding place, he'd gone. That's why when Hagrid goes to get Harry, he meets Siri Black at Harry's. He knows Peter's gone. He's not where he ought to be. So he goes to try and find Lily and James. Why he takes a flying motorbike and doesn't just apparate, that we find out later witches and wizards can do, is a question that's left unanswered. So they say, let's force him to reveal himself. Flash of white light comes out of the wands, and there's Peter Pettigrew in the flesh right before them. Serious Remus, my old friends. Okay. So they talk. Pedigree tries to weasel his way out of things. Page 368, Black says, you haven't been hiding from me for 12 years. Remember the prophecy that Trelawney gave? The servant of the Dark Lord will be unchained. He'll go back, his help is Dark Lord, his, his master rise to power. You've been hiding from Voldemort's old supporters. I heard things in Azkaban, Peter. They all think you're dead. And there's plenty of supporters still out there. Okay? So Peter tries to suck up to Remus. He, he knows he's not going to be able to change Sirius' mind. They accuse him of being a spy. Page 369, Sirius says, Lily and James only made you secret keeper because I suggested it. I thought it was a perfect plan, a bluff. Voldemort would be sure to come after me. Would never dream they'd use a weak, talentless thing like you. Okay. Page 370. Harry says, well... How come he never tried to hurt Harry, or Hermione says, how come he never tried to hurt Harry before now? I mean, he said three years. Hermione, thank you, thank you. Uh, Pedigree says, there, thank you, thank you. See, Remus? Serious. Because you never did anything for anyone unless you could see what was in it for you. Voldemort's been in hiding for 15 years. They say he's half dead. So did he go in hiding before he tried to kill Harry's parents? Because that was 13 years ago. Okay? Or 12 years ago, actually. Voldemort's been in hiding for, for 15 years. They say he's half dead. You weren't about to commit murder right under Albus Dumbledore's nose. Why? For a wreck of a wizard who lost all his power, were you? You'd want to be quite sure 
He was the biggest bully in the playground before you went back to him. All right? So Hermione asks another question of Sirius. How would you get out of Azkaban if you didn't use dark magic? Sirius, I don't know. I think the only reason I never lost my mind is that I knew I was innocent. A nice little twist here. And that wasn't a happy thought. <laughs> think about it. You get put into prison for 12 years. Or as, you know, uh, happened recently this past summer, you get put into prison and then you get let out of prison 38 years later because it's discovered you weren't guilty to begin with for the crime you were committed into prison for. I knew I was innocent. That wasn't a happy thought. So the Dementors couldn't suck it out of me. But it kept me sane and knowing who I am. Helped me keep my powers. Okay? He said they could tell that my feelings were less, less human. He was able to transform into a dog. But they thought, of course, I was losing my mind. But then I saw Peter in that picture. And notice what happened after Fudge came. They heard him in his sleep saying, he's at Hogwarts. He's at Hogwarts. Bottom of 371. His black keeps speaking almost like he's hypnotized ready to strike at the moment he could be sure of allies and deliver the last potter to them. If he gave them Harry, who dare say he'd betray Lord Voldemort? So I had to do something. And Harry remembers what, me, what Mr. Weasley said about Sirius saying he's at Hogwarts. It was as if someone had lit a fire in my head, top of 372, and the Dementors couldn't destroy it. It wasn't a happy feeling. It was an obsession. What's the obsession? to get out, to find Peter. Right? He talked about watching Harry fly, flies as well as his father. Bottom of 372 and 373, top of 373, Sirius and Remus forgive each other because each thought the other was the spy. Shall we kill them together, Lupin, uh, Remus says. Yes, I think so. You wouldn't, you won't. Ron, haven't I been a good friend, says Peter. Okay, that's just, Ron, I let you sleep in my bed. Kind of strange. Peter Pettigrew then goes and tries to seek help from Hermione. She says, get away. Then he goes to Harry. And he says, Harry, James wouldn't have wanted me killed. James would have understood Harry. He would have shown me mercy. Lupin, uh, or Sirius says to him, you sold Lily and James to Voldemort. Do you deny it? Page 374. What could I have done? You have no idea. He has weapons you can't imagine. I was scared, Sirius. I was never brave like you and Remus. I never meant it to happen. Notice what Remus says. You've been passing information to him for a year. Okay, if Remus knew that he'd been passing information to him for a year, why would Remus have suggested that Peter Pettigrew become the secret keeper? He didn't filter out information they wanted to Okay, but if he's a secret keeper, he can also tell Voldemort where James and Lily are hiding. So why would you intentionally have someone that you believe to be a spy get the nugget of information that they need? Unless he doesn't know that Peter Pettigrew was betraying that information until now. Just seems like there's something odd there. Pettigrew, he was taking over everywhere. What was there to be gained by refusing him? In other words, what was in it for me? 
Pettigrew argues. Black, what was there to be gained? By fighting the most evil wizard who's ever existed? Only innocent lives, Peter. Notice, Peter's talking about what's in it for me. Black saying is looking at what's in it for the wizarding world as a whole. You don't understand. He would have killed me, Sirius. Look at Sirius's reply. And this goes back to what Dumbledore says at the end of book one about a well-organized mind. Then you should have died. Died rather than betray your friends as we would have done for you. Okay? It's the example, if you're up on news, it's the example of Chris Mintz. Anybody recognize the name? He was a guy who was going back to school, Oregon, okay, Umpqua Community College, going back to school after I think it was 13 years in the Army, 30-year-old, getting his trainer's degree. Okay? He hears the gunshots in Snyder Hall. He's not there at the moment. Okay? As he runs towards the sound of the gunshots, he tells other students to run the opposite direction. Goes to the library, pulls a fire alarm, which immediately signals the police. And he makes his way to the hall where the shooter is. He barricades the door. He gets shot three times through the door. Shooter comes in and he tells him, Today's my sixth son's sixth birthday. Don't do this. Don't do this. And the guy shoots him two more times. I got shot seven times. There's conflicting. Reports say five to seven. Back, both arms, gut, both legs. Okay. Broken, broke both legs. Notice, you should have died rather than betrayed your friends. You should have realized, said Lupin, that if, Luke, that if Voldemort didn't kill you, we would. Goodbye, Peter. Hermione gets ready to cover her face. Why? She doesn't want to see a death. Harry runs forward, placing himself in front of Pettigrew. Okay. No. You can't. What? Harry, this piece of vermin is the reason you have no parents. This cringing bit of filth would have seen you die, too, without turning a hair. You heard him. His own stinking skin meant more to him than your old family. I know. We'll take him up to the castle. He can go to Azkaban. But don't kill him. Harry, thank you, thank you. It's more than I deserve. Of course it's more than he deserves. What is it? It's mercy. Okay? Mercy is always more than one deserves. It's not judgment. Judgment or justice is always getting what one deserves. Okay? Harry, I'm not doing this for you. He's not doing it to protect Peter Pettigrew. Who's he trying to protect? Serious and Remus. Why? I don't reckon my dad would have wanted them to become killers just for you. And because we're going to find out in a later novel, when you kill somebody, when you murder somebody, which is what they would be doing, this would not be justifiable homicide. This would be out-and-out -out murder. You shred your soul. You rip it into pieces. Siri says, you're the only person who has the right to decide, Harry. But think what he did. What did Harry tell Lupin in one of his anti-Dementor lessons when he learns about the Dementor's kiss? That's what black deserves. But he's not willing, at this point, to have the same thing done to Peter Pettigrew. Okay? So they agree. They start to make their way back up to the castle. And what else does Harry discover? 
He's learned Sirius Black was his godfather. So what does Sirius say? Well, you know, if you want, you can come live with me. I am your legal guardian. Page 379. Harry, what? Leave the Dursleys? I, if you don't want to, are you insane? Of course I want to. Have you got a house? When can I move in? Book five. <laughs> you want to? Yes, I mean it. They keep going on, and what happens? The clouds move, and it's a full moon. And Lupin hasn't taken his wolf potion. Lupin starts to transform. Pettigrew dies, makes a run for it. Okay. Sirius has to transform because he's got to get, make sure that Lupin isn't a danger to anybody else. And keep in mind, this part you have to read into it a little bit. How long has it been since Lupin has transformed? It's been a while. It's at least been all of the school year because he's been taking the Wolfsbane potion all year long. And he said, you know, when I transformed, it was pretty painful. So this isn't a pleasant experience for him. So Sirius goes off. Snake comes to. But before he comes to, we've got Harry there. Sirius comes back. Page 382, 83. And all these Dementors show. And Harry's trying to do the Expector Patron. Sirius turns back into a man. He crouches on all fours. And he starts to howl. And Harry starts to think, I'm going to live with my godfather. I'm leaving the Dursleys. And he tries to do Expector Patronum, and he can't. But just before he passes out, he sees a white light from the other side of the lake. Page 384. He felt himself fall forward again, face down, too weak to move. The screaming had stopped. He no longer hears his mother. And he sees something as bright as a unicorn. He watches it, canter to a halt. And it looks familiar. Hermione's secret. Snape awakes, takes them up to the castle, and tells Cornelius Fudge what the students had done. Okay. And Harry tries to convince Snape and Fudge and Dumbledore that what Black and Lupin said was true. Of course, Lupin isn't around anymore. And now that Black knows that, excuse me, that Fudge knows that Lupin is a werewolf, he's not going to trust anything Lupin says. So, essentially, you've got the word of a couple of students, one with a broken leg now, who's in pain and probably out of his mind, against an esteemed professor at the school. And Snape says, bottom of 389, you know, they're confunded. Okay. Page 390, Snape says, um, when Dumbledore says, I need a word with Mr. Potter and Miss Granger. I've just been talking to Sirius Black. Snape says, I suppose he's told you the same fairy tale he's planted in Potter's mind. Something about a rat and Pettigrew being alive. That's Black's story, yes. Does my evidence count for nothing? Okay. Dumbledore says, I want to speak with Harry and Hermione alone. So, what does Dumbledore tell them? You have to see reason. Reason says you are confused and Snape is right. But then Harry discovers something about Hermione. She's got a time turner. So page 393, Dumbledore says, I have no power to make other men see the truth or to overrule the Minister of Magic. Harry's expecting Dumbledore to pull some amazing solution. 
out of the air. In other words, he's expecting Dumbledore to do magic, to pull a rabbit out of the hat, as it were. So, Dumbledore tells Hermione, you must not be seen. Three turns should do it. And Hermione explains to Harry about the time turner. So she turns it three times, and they go back several hours, three hours. But Hermione doesn't understand what Dumbledore wants them to do. So it takes Harry to figure that part out. Harry, we can save more than one life today. Buckbeaks. So they go down to Hagrid's office, or Hagrid's um, hut, with the cloak on, and notice what happens. They see themselves <laughs> come down the path to Hagrid's hut. So Harry and Hermione, from the future, having gone back in the past, covered with the invisibility cloak, see Harry, Ron, and Hermione leave Hagrid's hut. They see them hide. Um, you hear Hagrid talk to Buckbeak. Three, no, about 400 or so. Harry hears the committee talk about the, or, or pronounce the execution. Okay. And Harry gets Buckbeak to move 401. They make their way to the forest. With Buckbeak. Dumbledore, McNair, Hagrid, Fudge come out of Hagrid's hut, and what do they discover? Buckbeak's gone. So the thud, when they hear the axe, is what? Of an axe hitting an empty stump. So, page 403. Harry says, now what? Now what are we supposed to do? Hermione says, we have to hide. Okay. They see Ron Scabbers, Sirius, okay. page 406. They wait for essentially the Dementors. Hermione says, top of the page, Harry, why didn't the Dementors get Sirius? I remember them coming, then I, I passed out. Harry says, um, must have been somebody created Patronus, a powerful one. But who? Did you see what they looked like? Was it one of the teachers? Harry, no, it wasn't a teacher. But it must have been a really powerful wizard, Hermione says. Couldn't you see? Harry, yeah, I saw him. Notice Harry's not saying who it was. Who did you think it was? Uh, I think it was my dad. Harry? Uh, your dad's dead. I know that. You think you saw his ghost? I don't know. Maybe I was seeing things. I know it sounds crazy. And he's thinking about his father and about Wormtail and Mooney and Padfoot and Prongs. And Hermione says, okay, here we come. And she sees them leaving the Wandering Willow. They go and hide in Hagrid's hut again. And Harry says, I've got to see what's going on. Hermione, you can't interfere. Harry, I'm not going to interfere. So Harry goes to his side of the lake. He sees himself and Hermione. And there's the Dementors. Harry says, I need to run, but he can't run. He sees himself falling. He sees Hermione falling. He sees Sirius. The Dementors are getting closer. Page 411. It was time for the rescuer to appear, but no one was coming. And then it hit him. He hadn't seen him as his father. He'd seen himself. Expecto Patronum. But why is he able to do Expecto Patronum so well this time? 
He knew he could do it. And the Dementors aren't coming at him. They're coming at him over there. Right? The Patronus turns after it demolishes the Dementors and it comes back to him. And Hermione, uh, Harry explains to Hermione what he did. Okay? So they go back up to the hall. Um, they fly Buckbeak up to Sirius. Let's see here. Dumbledore shows up. Buckbeak escapes with um, Sirius and 419. Skipping a bunch. Snake just goes berserk. They hear Fudge saying he must have disapparated Severus. We should have left somebody in the room with him when this gets out. Snape, he didn't disapparate. You can't. Potter has something to do with Potter. He's been locked up. They go into the hospital wing. And there's Harry. Snape, what did you do? See here, Snape, be reasonable, says Fudge. I mean, this door's been locked. We just... They helped him escape. I know it. Okay. So Dumbledore says, Snape's not unbalanced. That is, don't worry, Cornelius. We don't have to sentence Snape off to St. Mungo's Hospital for Magical Maladies. He's just disappointed. Um... Next day, we find out Lupin turns in his resignation because Snape accidentally let slip to the Slytherins that Lupin was a werewolf. And the letters have started arriving. Page 424. That's where I want to pick up. Lupin gives Harry back the Marauder's Map. And Harry says, um... You told me Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs would have wanted to lure me out of school. You, you said they'd have thought it was funny. Lupin, man, we would have. I have no hesitation saying that James would have been highly disappointed if his son had never found any of the secret passages out of the castle. Dumbledore shows up. Tells Lupin his carriage is there. So Lupin leaves, and we're left with Dumbledore and Harry in Lupin's office. Why so miserable, Harry? You should be very proud of yourself after last night. Harry, it didn't make any difference. Pettigrew got away. Didn't make any difference. You helped uncover the truth. You saved an innocent man from a terrible fate. What fate was Fudge going to give to Sirius? Dementor's kiss. Think about it, Harry. And Dumbledore, using the word terrible, reminds Harry of Sybil Trelawney's prediction. And he says, he tells Dumbledore about it. He says, yeah, her voice went all deep and her eyes rolled. She said, she said Voldemort's servant was going to set out to return to him before midnight. She said the servant would help him back to power. Was that a real prediction? And Dumbledore says, you know, Harry, I think it might have been. Brings total up to two. So Harry says, then it makes it my fault if Voldemort comes back. Notice the logic Harry's using. If Peter Pettigrew was Dumbledore, was Voldemort's loyal servant, and Harry allowed Peter Pettigrew to serve, and the prophecy was that Peter Pettigrew would help Lord Voldemort come back to power, therefore, it's Harry's fault that Voldemort comes back to power. Dumbledore said, no. Hasn't your time, your experience with the time turner taught you anything? What's the point? Consequences of our actions are always so complicated, so diverse, that predicting the future is a very difficult business indeed. And he says, Professor Trelawney, bless her, is living proof of that. Why? What is Harry assuming? That his decision controls Peter Pettigrew's fate. You did a very noble thing in saving Pettigrew's life. But if he helps Voldemort back to power, Voldemort owes his life to you. 
You've sent Voldemort a deputy who is in your debt. When one wizard saves another wizard's life, it creates a certain bond between them. I'm much mistaken if Voldemort wants his servant in the debt of Harry Potter. Harry, I don't want any connection. Pettigrew, this is magic at its deepest, its most impenetrable, Harry. But trust me, the time may come when you will be very glad you saved Pettigrew's life. In other words, my heart tells me Gollum has something yet to do with the fate of the ring. So, Dumbledore pulls out his ace card. I knew your father very well. He would have saved Pettigrew's, Pettigrew's life also. Harry, I thought it was my dad who conjured the Patronus. You do look like him, Harry. Harry, I mean, it was stupid taking notes him. I mean, I mean, he's dead. And Dumbledore uses this kind of trite language. Your father's alive in you, Harry. Shows himself most plainly when you have need of him. How else could you have produced that particular Patronus? Okay. Prongs wrote again last night. Which kind of implies... If you don't have the next paragraph, that Dumbledore knew all about prongs. But the next paragraph, Sirius told me all about there being an animagi. He says, extraordinary. Not least because they kept it from me. Okay. So, just before the end of the book, Seamus Finnegan asks, page 429, wonder who we'll get for Defense Against the Dark Arts next year? Dean Thomas, vampire? It's just a little foreshadowing. Um, what does Harry have to show his aunt and uncle, or what defense does he now have against the Dursleys, or what protection does he have? Um, well, he has another spot to live. Okay, he has another spot to live if he wants it. What else? And it's related to that. How did the novel open? Who's on the news? Yeah, the escape of Sirius Black. So, he can now tell his aunt and uncle, my godfather, the escaped mass, you know, mass murderer, is keeping an eye on things. That kind of, you know, no, no hands-on um, approach from them. Okay, we'll stop there.